we are now ready to start talking about where a given function increases, decreases, or is constant. So for the following three cases, we want to keep in mind that we're considering some arbitrary function y equals f of x. Now, in case one, we say that f of x is strictly increasing if when x sub 1 is less than x sub 2, then we have that f of x sub 1 is less than f of x sub 2. Now, this is a lot of formality, so let's break this down into easier to understand terms. So all that this definition is really telling us is that as x gets larger, the y values get larger. So a nice visual representation of a increasing function is the line y equals x. So notice here that as we go through, as we continue along the line, those y values are always getting larger and larger. Now our second definition we say that a function f of x is strictly decreasing if when x sub 1 is less than x sub 2, then f of x sub 1 is greater than f of x sub 2. Now again, this is very formal, so let's break this down into easier to understand terms. So an easy way to interpret a strictly decreasing function is to think that as x gets larger, the y values get smaller. So we can think of the diagonal line with a negative slope, where y is equal to negative x. So the, all the y values here are decreasing. And last but certainly not least, we have case three, and we say that a function f of x is considered constant if when x sub 1 less than x sub 2, then f of x sub 1 is equal to f of x sub 2. So again, breaking this down into easy to understand terms. So we can say a function is constant if as x gets larger, y stays the same. So a visual interpretation of a constant function would be a horizontal line. So the following are some important reminders to keep in mind when we are considering the integrals of where a function increases, decreases, or is constant. So the first one says that a function y equals f of x increases, decreases, or is constant on intervals of x values that exist in that function's domain. So to illustrate this idea, let's consider the graph of the square root function. So considering the graph of our square root function, we know that even root radicals do not exist if their inside is negative. So keeping that in mind, we can recall that the domain is where we set that radicand or inside greater than or equal to zero. So to determine where this function is increasing, we must keep this domain in mind. So we can see that this function does not exist for any x values that are negative. So we don't even need to consider that region. Now, in order to see where this function is increasing, decreasing, or constant, I like to imagine myself standing on the graph. And you want to ask yourself, are we climbing up the mountain? Are we skiing down the mountain? Or are we walking on the beach? So in this case, we can pretty clearly see that we are climbing up the mountain. So we can conclude that our function f of x is increasing on the entirety of its domain. And this is increasing where x is an element of the open interval from zero to positive infinity. So you may be thinking to yourself, wait a second, why did we exclude the endpoint of the domain? Why aren't we including zero? And that's a great question, which leads us to our second point, which tells us that since a function cannot be increasing, decreasing, or constant simultaneously, we must exclude the x-coordinate 
where a function is changing direction. And that's what's happening up here. This is a point where the function is changing direction. So to highlight this point, let's consider the graph of the parabola. So looking at the graph of the parabola, we can see that we have a turning point here at the origin. And again, imagining yourself standing on the graph, we can see that on the left-hand side, we are moving downward changing direction here at the turning point, and then we'll be moving upward. So this turning point represents a change of direction. And we can conclude that therefore our function f of x decreases when x is an element of the interval from negative infinity to zero. And we can also see that f is then changing direction in quadrant one, or f of x increases where x is an element of the interval from zero to positive infinity.